well, I didn't realize I'd be traveling quite as much as I do. That, that was one thing. Marge Hoffa is vice chair of the Minnesota DFL party. I'm not a political professional or anything like that. We've got a lot of those and they're wonderful. That We need that. Marge and DFL Chair Ken Martin have been key figures in guiding the Democratic Farmer Labor Party into the responsive and relevant organization that it is today. But there's also people like me who are just, you know, we started out as activists, we believe in their causes, we believe in the Democratic Party. Marge got involved in politics during Paul Wellstone's first campaign for the U.S. Senate in 1990. Since then, Marge Hoffa has been a can-do activist based in Minnetonka, where she has plenty of company. Among them, Yvonne Seltzer, her new state representative. As DFL Vice Chair, Marge travels throughout Minnesota. I meet with activists, I meet with leaders of the Senate districts and the county units, and I find out who's running for office, who, who our candidates are, who our electeds are, and I try to work with them and make sure that we're as effective as we possibly can be. We are actually having a road show. We'll be taking it around to our different party units. And one of the things we'll be doing is making sure that we get out there and find out who those voters are that we don't know anything about, the ones that registered the day of the election. Uh, registering new voters is another thing we want to do a couple times this year, yet before the, the midterm. We want to make sure that uh, if you need training of any kind of technology that we have available to them, that they're out doing that. Make sure they're raising money and that they're engaged with the community, writing letters, you know, just getting ready for 14 because the more we do this year mm -hmm. in 13, the better we're going to be off next year in 14 when we actually have the election, which will be critical for making sure that we keep the state moving forward with Governor Dayton and all of the great things he wants to see the state moving with. The governor and, and the Universal marriage is... In those a, days, of course, Poland right is You vote for me, I'll tell you what. <laughs> now, the DFL is a big tent party. It's kind of like herding cats, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is, but you know, when you go into greater Minnesota, they want to feel like they're connected to the state party and that we're just not some building in St. Paul. They want to know that there's people that are actually behind the, the DFL and not just what they see locally. So it's important for us to get out to the other parts of the state so that they understand that we're there with them, we're there supporting them. They don't necessarily see us all the time, but they see us on a regular basis and know we're there to help them. What kind of support are you talking about here? They want to know that they're going to have um, trainings as far as how to use all of the different technologies that we have available now. We've got a lot of information that they can use that, that's accessible by our party leaders, that we've got trainings available to them, and that there'll be resources there to help them with getting more Democrats elected. So if a candidate needs some help mm -hmm. and gets endorsed by their local DFL party unit, mm -hmm. they can call you up and say, hey, we need some help. What can you do? Is that how it works? They don't necessarily call me personally, yeah. but they they might call someone from the House Caucus if they're running for the House. They'll call the Senate Caucus if they're calling for uh, if they're running for the Senate. Uh, we have uh, facilities there that they can actually, if they wanted to do a taping of a short commercial, they can do that right there. Um, they can put it up on YouTube right away. If they want to do phone banks, they've got people that want to do uh, virtually phone banks, or they want to do them right there at Plato. We're there to assist them so that they can get out to the voters, not necessarily not being able to door knock, but maybe they can do it by phone. Mm -hmm. So we have those uh, facilities available as well. When I go to DFL headquarters mm -hmm. in St. Paul, what am I going to see? We're going to find a very professional organization. We've got conference rooms. We've got a multi-purpose room where we can have larger meetings. Professional staff is over there. House caucus, Senate caucus. It's um, very much an organization that people want to work for and work with. To me, it seems like the, the DFL is the party where independents and progressive Republicans actually feel at home these days. Um, what are we doing as a state party to encourage that? The outreach, actually we're doing roundtable discussions on a regular basis with different communities. Uh, with the, com uh, the Somali community, we've done it with the Latino community. Uh, there's one coming up um, soon. That there, every month there's something going on with a different community. So we're not just reaching out to them before the election and saying, vote for us. We're engaging in conversations. We're finding out what their issues are, what's important to them, what they can do um, that will be important to the Democrats and vice versa. So it's, it's a conversation. It's not, we just want you to vote for us and that's it. We don't need you anymore. What can people expect when they come to a local DFL meeting? 
they can expect that they'll be welcomed with open arms because we're always looking for new people, particularly if they're young, because they've got the energy and they, they, they want to learn and they, they can have the experience of doing pretty much anything they want to if they just say, raise their hand and say, I'd like to do that. But we're there to say, you know, what skills do you have? What would you like to do? What is it that you feel is important? Is there an issue that got you here? Is there a candidate that got you here? We want to get people involved in, a, in an area that they're comfortable with. One thing I, I think is true about the Democrats in Minnesota, it's a, a grassroots party. It starts at the bottom, in the neighborhood, in the block, and it goes up. It's not a top-down party where we take marching orders from uh, the chair or the vice chair, is it? No, it's not at all. Consider the possibility that if worst comes to worst, that you, you Occasionally we get, well, why aren't you telling legislator X to do this, that's in our party platform. You need to tell them that they need to follow that. And it's like, you know, Ken and I feel both very strongly about this, is that the people that elected them are the ones that they're accountable to. Yeah. They're not accountable to me, Marge Hoff, a vice chair of the state party, or Ken Martin, who's the chair. They're accountable to the people who worked on their campaigns, helped get them elected, and the people that voted for them, not the party leadership at all. It's up to the people that put them there to hold them accountable, not us. So in that respect, we're different than the Republicans? Very much so. What are the Republicans like? Now, this is your point of view <laughs> from the left, right? <laughs> They're much more top down. That's all we need to say right now. Yes. Um, <laughs> Marge Hoffa, thanks for finally coming on Democratic Visions. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching. Democratic Vision segments can be seen on our YouTube channel and the DFL48.org website. Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers through DFL Senate District 48, Eden Prairie and Minnetonka. Lori Pryor, Chair.